Hello grade 11s, in this video we will be looking at ideal gases versus real gases. What an ideal gas is, under which conditions real gases behave like ideal gases, and under which conditions real gases deviate from the ideal gas behavior. In this playlist we'll be looking at a number of things relating to gas laws, ideal gases versus real gases, and Boyle's law. Let's jump right into the video, but don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. I want you to think of an ideal gas as a hypothetical gas that obeys all the gas laws that we've spoken about under all conditions of temperature and pressure. When scientists refer to an ideal gas, they refer to a gas that has identical particles. Every single particle is the same as another particle. And we know that that's obviously not necessarily true for real gases. Particles are often unique. They have their own speed or kinetic energy. Ideal gases are also assumed to have zero volume. The particles are assumed to have zero volume, no volume. They do not contribute to the volume in the container. Ideal gases are also said to have no intermolecular forces present between particles. Absolutely nothing besides when they actually collide with each other. But this is not the truth, especially under cer certain circumstances such as high pressure scenarios where we force all the particles very, very close to each other and the repulsive intermolecular forces are there. Another way to describe an ideal gas is that the collision of the molecules with themselves or the walls are perfectly elastic. Now, if you haven't heard of elastic collisions yet, basically an elastic collision is when the kinetic energy of the two colliding particles or two colliding objects are the same before the collision and after the collision. In other words, there's no energy loss or no kinetic energy loss. Basically, what they're saying is kinetic energy is not being transformed into other forms of energy when they collide. And this is not always true in real life. But these are the things that you need to know in order to describe an ideal gas. Here's another look at real gases versus ideal gases. Now remember, ideal gases, we said the particles have no volume. But real gases, the particles, we know they indeed have a volume. We said that for ideal gases, the collisions are assumed to be elastic. But we know in real gases, the, there's energy loss in the collisions. Ideal gases, we say there's no interactions between particles, no intermolecular forces. But real gases definitely do have intermolecular forces. Although they are weak, they are present. So why do we even speak about ideal gases if real gases deviate from the ideal gas model? Well, the ideal gas model definitely helps us explain the behavior of gases and gas molecules under certain temperatures and pressures. So I have over here that some gases definitely do act like ideal gases at normal states of temperature and pressure. So I want you to think of when the temperature is not too low, when the temperature is higher, and when the pressure is not too high, so normal pressure conditions, then real gases act like ideal gases. But as soon as we approach certain conditions, such as low temperatures and high pressures, that's when the real gases deviate from ideal gas behavior. So they no longer act like ideal gases. So when do real gases deviate? When I say the word deviate, it means they no longer follow ideal gas laws. When do real gases no longer behave like ideal gases? When temperature is very low and when pressure is very, very high. And maybe when I explain why, you'll remember these two scenarios. First of all, remember in previous videos, we spoke about the fact of when we decrease the volume. So we take the volume of the container and we make it smaller and smaller and smaller. Remember, the number of moles is staying the same and the temperature is staying the same. So we just decreasing the volume of the container, we're making the container smaller and smaller. What happens to pressure? Pressure increases. So essentially we are increasing the pressure by pressing this lid further and further and further down, okay? Like in this picture over here. This compresses the gas as seen in this image. And we know that gases are compressible. 
But as we continue to increase the pressure and make it bigger and bigger and bigger, so more and more and more pressure, what ends up happening is that the volume does not decrease as we expect it to. The reason why is because between these particles, we have intermolecular forces. And as the particles move closer to each other, those intermolecular forces are repulsive forces those forces become more and more noticeable. We can no longer pretend that they don't exist like we do with ideal gases. Those forces become noticeable. They become very, very present. And basically, the volume of the container does not decrease as we expect it to. The volume is much larger than expected. So there is a devia deviation from Boyle's law, another thing that is covered in this playlist. Basically, as pressure increases, so here at zero, pressure is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, volume is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but instead of the curve continuing to go smaller and smaller, instead of vo volume getting smaller and smaller and smaller, this is the deviation that we experience. Because the repulsive intermolecular forces are observable. And what happens at very low temperatures? Because remember, we said that real gases deviate at high pressures, which we've discussed in low temperatures. Well, at low temperatures, if all real gases were always acting like ideal gases, that would mean that there would be no attractive forces present between the molecules. That would mean at very low temperatures, gases would not be able to condense and form liquids, which we know is not true. We know that if we make the temperature low enough, what essentially ends up happening is that the kinetic energy between the, mo mo the molecules decreases, the forces of attraction between the molecules increase, and the gas actually liquefies. What this ends up meaning is that there are fewer gas molecules present, meaning that the pressure ends up being lower than what we actually predict. So because of the intermolecular forces, again, when the temperature is very, very low, gases actually condense and they turn into liquid. This is something that we pretend does not happen when we have an ideal gas, but it definitely happens for real gases. So again, when the pressure is very high, when the temperature is very low, when it's very cold, that's when the real gas no longer acts like an ideal gas. Then the flip side of that is the real gases behave like ideal gases when the temperatures are higher and the pressures are lower. So here's a little summary for you. Real gases deviate, so they no longer act like ideal gases. I drew a little sad face because they're not the same anymore. At low temperatures, high pressures, real gas approach ideal gas behavior, so they're the same, everything's all good. At high temperatures, low pressure. So basically, opposite scenarios. And here's a table that summarizes the different properties of ideal gases versus real gases and some common properties that they have at the bottom. Click the links in the description box below for more videos under this playlist. We will be tackling Boyle's Law amongst other things in other videos. Can't wait to see you then. Bye everyone.